I want to talk to you about the cost of discipleship, which is found in and through your own personal cross. But before I do that, I think it's important to just touch on this opening sentence or two, which confuses a lot of people about hating your mother and your father, your wife, your husband, your children, indeed the cat and dog. Let's talk about what, what Jesus is really driving at when he says hate. Um, now, that was written 2,000 years ago in a different language, in the language of, of the Greeks. We are trying to understand that in the 21st century in America in English. So we'll use some examples to try to explain what, the, what he meant by hate. I'm going to use as an example. Yesterday, it rained like cats and dogs, and it drove me up the wall because I was so hungry, I wanted to go out to eat, I was so hungry I could eat a horse. Well, I used three uh, idioms right there. I'm sorry, but I didn't see cats and dogs coming down from the clouds when it was raining yesterday. Um, I didn't drive up the wall. In fact, they don't drive at all, so it's going to be hard to drive up a wall. And even though you may look like it, I can't eat a horse. But I use as those three examples of idioms of, of how we speak in our language. That If we would have said those things 2,000 years ago in Palestine, in the company of Jesus, they would think you're crazy. Well, what is Jesus driving at when he says hate? It's really more of a, of a comparison. We would say today, I would say today, I prefer blueberries over strawberries. Jesus would have said 2,000 years ago, I love blueberries and I hate strawberries. He's using that terminology as a sign of, of, of preference, not of hate or love. Even though I do love blueberries and I do love strawberries, but I prefer blueberries over strawberries. Jesus is saying, prefer me, Jesus thing, versus your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your children. So that, just so that's clear, it's not hating that person, it's preferring Jesus. So now we walk into discipleship, and we'll hear a lot about discipleship you know, already this season already. We've heard a lot about discipleship. Discipleship has to do with carrying your own cross. You have to carry your own cross. Remember, it says in there, you must carry your cross. You're not supposed to carry your mom and dad's cross, your husband and wife's cross, or, or certainly not your children's cross. We're all responsible to carry our own cross. So what, do, what is this cross? I'm going to use as a, <clears throat> a short little thing for C-R-O-S-S, -S, your cross, my cross. First, the C. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's Christ. Christ is always first, always first in the carrying of our own cross. We attach everything to Jesus Christ. He is the purpose and the reason that we even have breath in our here present. So everything, including our own carrying our own cross, starts with Jesus Christ. The O is obedience. Or excuse me, I guess I got to spell it right, don't I? <laughs> How about the R? <laughs> The, the R is responsibility. Responsibility. And in praying through this scripture this week, um, Pope Francis has issued um, that this next 30 days is the season, he's calling season of creation. The season of creation. Which is us being good stewards of the beautiful gift that God has given us in this world. And he talks about in his document, Season of Creation, that we really need to be particular in how we're treating this environment that we have, not only for us today, but for our future generations. So a little bit of the challenge on that is, um, how big is your carbon footprint? What are you doing to conserve energy? What are you doing to conserve the environment? What are you doing to help enhance the beauty of creation that he's been given to us to act as stewards of. I'm going to give you some simple little examples. <clears throat> and, and Deacon Tom can, can verify this because he's my neighbor. 
I keep my house at 78 degrees during the day. Now, I know a lot of people keep it less than that, and we turn it down to 75 or so at night. What is your temperature set in your house? The cross has to do with humility. It has to do with lessening of myself and for the greater of all those around me. What is the temperature set in your house? Can you increase it one degree? Seems like a silly thing, but it's also a point of humility saying, I don't really need to have it set at 78 degrees. Maybe I can have it set at 79 degrees. Maybe you have yours set at 72 degrees, whatever you have it set at. I challenge you to think about that and maybe talk as a family. Can you increase it just one degree? That's going to help reduce our carbon footprint and help the environment. Document season of creation. How about recycle? Are you doing a pretty good job of recycling? I've heard people say that, oh, it doesn't get recycled, it gets thrown into the trash. That's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to be able to do those things that I can do, i.e., let's say, recycle. What are you doing that you can, you can help this environment that we've been blessed with? Just pray about that and think about that over the, this next week or so. Now comes the O. <laughs> the R-O. It is obedience. Now that's a tough one. Uh, particularly for me. Wives, be, be obedient to your husband. Husbands, be obedient to your wives. Employees, be obedient to your bosses. Students, be obedient to your parents and your teachers. What that do, what the driving force of that is humility. At the center of the cross is humility. Humility is saying, I am less important than you are. And the, all the great mystics in our Catholic tradition of spirituality point to humility as being the first step in the spiritual life. Lessening ourselves. If I am overly concerned myself, I don't have any room for Jesus. Humility is offering me the opportunity to be less, to allow Jesus to be more. And a central point of that is obedience to someone or something that's higher than you are, that's more important than you are. So who in your life needs a little bit extra that you need to be more obedient to? Pray about that. Lessen ourselves so that our cross becomes easier so we can walk to discipleships of Jesus Christ. The C-R-O-S, the S is sacrifice. How are you sacrificing? How are we sacrificing? Are we doing something for others? And I'm going to just use our church because I think it's an incredible parish that we are blessed to all be within. Is The food bank is a great example. The food bank, as I'm sure many of you know, we distributed last year 2 million pounds of food to those in need in our community. 2 million pounds. It is open six days a week to help those in our community. And I, I know that all of us that have been in the grocery store for any time in the last year know how expensive food has gotten. And for those people in our community that are really suffering... The food is an expensive piece of it. How can you, how can I sacrifice? Can I do some donations to the food bank? Yes, or this week I walked into the chapel, which is, is near completion now. Unbelievable. I can't wait for y'all to see the chapel. It is incredible. It, it will be a place of pilgrim, pilgrimage for people to come, particularly with all the incredible uh, relics that we're going to have there. Awesome. Have you made a contribution to the chapel? Can you sacrifice maybe? It's never too late and make a contribution to the chapel? The completion of that? Where, where is it that you can make a sacrifice? Where is it that I can make a sacrifice to be able to help lessen the burden on my cross so that I can help others around me? And the final thing of the C-R-O-S-S is suffering. The cross begins and ends with suffering. 
we will not exist in this life without suffering. Suffering is part of this life because sin has entered into it. So what do I do with my suffering? <clears throat> now there's a difference between pain and suffering. They're two different things. Pain is a physical discomfort or an emotional discomfort. And that could be, the physical one, it could be obvious things. You know, my back has been bothering me lately. So what is, you may have some physical ailments that are going on right now. That's a physical discomfort, which is pain. Or it may be an emotional one. Maybe you just went through a divorce. Maybe a loved one just recently passed away. That your heart is broken. That is pain. Now it's the suffering, which is the emotions or the feelings that get attached to the pain. So maybe my back is hurting. That doesn't mean that I can be short with the people around me. Or I can be angry or snap at people because my back hurts. Right? Or maybe your heart is broken because you just lost a dear one. Maybe that suffering for you is feeling isolated, lonely, depressed, filled with anxiety. The, the feelings and emotions, we can do something about this. This we can't. The, pain, the physical pain, the medicine does whatever the medicine does, and we're left with whatever that is. Or it's the emotional difficulties. Those aren't forgotten. Why? Because we've got something between our ears. It's called a brain. I'm not going to forget those things. So those won't go away, but it's what I can do with the suffering, with the feelings and emotions. Notice it's called redemptive suffering, not redemptive pain. Because I can do something about this, the suffering, the feelings and emotions. We have the ability to do that. In those cases, when the pain of a loss of a loved one is leading me to feeling lonely or depressed or filled with anxiety, those are the, that's the piece of the cross that I can lift up. That's the burden that I can carry along in my role to discipleship. Where are you suffering at? What's in your heart that's got you twisted? That's what you bring to the Lord in prayer. That's the thing that's redeeming. That's the thing that helps you become a greater disciple of Jesus Christ. Not to be overwhelmed by it, but to pick up our crosses and move forward courageously, first and foremost, in and through the love of Jesus Christ, but knowing that suffering is part of it, the, the beginning and the end of it. So I encourage each of us to maybe pray over this next week is how, what is your cross to bear and how can you carry it so that we can all lead or be led to and through Jesus Christ in and through our own crosses. Amen? St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us.